Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rutella, and in this tutorial, I want to go over just uh, basically uh, in the past tutorial, the most recent one, I went over how to bake out certain texture maps, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to uh, use different texture maps uh, to target different parts of your model uh, so that you can paint different details more easily in uh, specific places uh, while including things uh, from like sculpted normals and uh, things like that as well as uh, yeah as well as how to incorporate uh, details like this that you've painted uh, in Photoshop into your normal map that you may have generated from some sort of sculpt so okay uh, all right. So first things first. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, target uh, how to target like the nooks and crannies on on your model, uh, which I went over in the last tutorial. But I'll do it again uh, just because it's very useful. So basically I have my ambient occlusion map, which if I open this up, which looks like this. Uh, basically, uh, just anywhere that would be, uh, that is obscured or sort of tucked away in your model. So like this entire dark part is like the inside of the pot. This is the inside bottom. And then, uh, like you can see, I'm getting some uh, detail here because that's where the the rim is and so and then like here this is where the edge of the uh, like the handle would lie and a lot of times in uh, where dirt and dust and grime gathers is in the crannies and the nooks and the little corners of your model and ambient inclusion map uh, allows you to target those spaces very easily which uh, includes, it, in this case, our our, sculpt, our sculpted detail as well that that we can that we can bring out. So basically, I have my ambient occlusion map brought into here, and I just want to select everything on there, and then uh, copy it, and then in a new layer. So I'll turn this off even, and then a new layer, make a clipping mask, alt click, alt left click to go into the clipping mask, and then shift control V will paste that in place. Uh, now we're not done here, because the last thing to do is we need to uh, invert it, because by default it would place things everywhere except for our, uh, yeah by default it would place everywhere, and, uh, uh, place details everywhere except for our nooks and crannies uh, where now it will allow us to you know, target those areas because white is where it will allow me to paint so uh, yeah so again here uh, if I were to come in here and paint like you'll see that I can only paint these details in a uh, places like these little nooks and crannies so like if I want some gook seeping out uh, from underneath my handle I can do so similarly up here in uh, in the rim you can see that my clipping masks uh, uh, basically my clipping mask uh, with my ambient occlusion won't allow me to paint under uh, it won't allow me to paint directly on the rim, but coming out from the corner, which is where this would be allowed, I am able to paint underneath. So again, being able to target these areas and uh, and add detail specifically to those zones is very useful. Similarly, uh, down here where we would have uh, that grunge that I sculpted, which, let me get this out of the way. I, which I can even just, in this case, I'll just use a big old round brush. And I can paint underneath there, 
and it will have that grime show up specifically where uh, uh, specifically where my sculpt is at its darkest and so on and so forth and I can also you know make different adjustments to uh, my clipping mask here yeah where yeah where, where I can do things like increase contrast uh, or or before I even uh, made my layer mask I, I, I could have made uh, some adjustments to my levels so that like certain details here can come through more uh, easily and so on and so forth but again basically just the main goal here is to be able to target those nooks and crannies and it allows me to do that so uh, I don't really need to go into uh, any more detail there that's the basic functionality explained and that will allow me uh, to more easily uh, target and place grime in specific areas which you know includes my sculpt as well as things like here on the spout you can see exactly what I'm talking about where that sort of stuff really uh, gets kinda caked around those areas which in this case that would be you know right here on my model and uh, yeah, like I, I could paint those details in there, uh, and again, it won't allow me to paint at uh, the like the further away I get from my nooks and crannies, uh, it won't allow me to paint in those locations. Which here I'm able to like paint because this is underneath the spout, and like this is where the edge of the spout would be, and again the like right in that zone is where a lot of dirt and grime and dust will gather so being able to target that very handy very useful uh, obviously I'm not producing a very high fidelity example here but the point is that you get the idea <clears throat> okay and moving along uh, uh, let's say I want to target the opposite of what I have so currently, I have uh, I'm targeting my nooks and crannies. What if instead I want to target my highlights? Well, I'll show you exactly how to do that as well. So uh, basically, it's going to be a combination of two different things. It's going to be my normal map. So that would be this guy right here which I'll drop in yes yeah, so that'd be my normal map combined with my uh, with my height map or my uh, displacement map which in order to get my displacement map to be workable I'm going to have to do something which if you export this out of something uh, like Marmoset or Mudbox or uh, all sorts of other things you might get something that's a little bit more workable by default but again I want to stick purely in Maya and uh, by default uh, Maya places all of the displacement information solely into the alpha so uh, uh, so basically in order for this to function I'm going to need to get my alpha so uh, my alpha channel control a and then control c and i'm going to paste my alpha channel shift control v into each of my rgb channels which will make it a grayscale and then i actually want my alpha to just be uh pure white which will just make it a matted image so all right, and that's what I want to be working with. So, with that done, 
I'll save this out as uh, remap. Save. Okay, and now I'll go back into here. And like I said, it's going to be a combination of my displacement and my alpha that I'm going to use to get a contour slash curvature map slash, uh, yeah. So, okay. So basically the steps are as follows, uh, where first of all, I'm going to get my, uh, normal map and then I'll go into adjustments and, uh, well, I'm going to desaturate it. Uh, which, uh, which I'll have to rasterize it first. Uh, rasterize smart object and then adjustments, desaturate. And now on this, I'll go filter, other, high pass filter. And I'm going to have this at about nine. And then on top of that is where I'm going to put my remapped displacement. And default settings will be fine. And I'll put that on here and now I'm gonna set this blend to screen and on something like this it's not going to and uh, da, 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 adjustments levels which you know before I set this to screen I'm gonna do my levels adjustment and then this will allow me to target like I said the outer parts and this is all sort of up to personal taste so you can sort of uh, clip this however you want and uh, you can see at certain parts like right here uh, it's getting that outer edge and it's getting the higher parts of my bump and stuff like that now this won't uh, in this case the place where I'm most interested in is areas like this and and things like that and here there's this little mark okay and but yeah once I get something I'm happy with I'm just going to go ahead and merge that and then this I will set to screen and I probably want to work with the opacity a little on there and so on and so forth and then whenever you get something that you're happy with there you can merge this into one map and then this would be my sort of curvature map and uh, again the purpose of this is so that it can be used as a clipping mask which uh, uh, targets the, po the points that are higher as opposed to the points that are like nooks and crannies tucked away uh, which you know this is lighter which is uh, where the highest part of my uh, of my map is and I can also like you know increase the contrast on this and so on and so forth again this is all up to personal preference just like use whatever you think will work best like I can uh, really clamp this down uh, to sort of uh, more heavily target certain areas or I can leave it more broad it's all up to you but again Control A, Control C, Alt, left click, Shift, Control V, paste in place, 
and then this will allow me to come into this layer and once again like I said allow me to target these areas that are higher and uh, and if you want more of this getting clipped out then that all just comes down to clipping out more values from your mask where black won't come through the lighter parts will come through more which is why it's darker on top of this grunge as opposed to uh, where I painted around that and so on and so forth and uh, this can just allow you to paint maps that more closely uh, match your details that uh, that you've created and uh, and so on and so forth again this is not the highest fidelity example I'm more just showing you the functionality behind how this can work uh, on the teapot model uh, just to help you target certain parts of your map okay and now the last thing I want to go over in this uh, which also you can use uh, these different uh, yeah, and then also once you have your paints and your sculpts uh, you can like copy these layers uh, and like merge it down uh, so that because you can uh, like flatten this or what have you and and you can merge things down and use your paint that you did using these clipping masks to then make more masks so that you can make your roughness maps and stuff like that anyway uh, more what I want to get at now is like all right so I have painted like grunge and scratches here in Photoshop uh, which uh, like this grunge for example uh, I did just by taking this uh, this grunge brush painting it one way and then I uh, went into my brush settings rotated it 90 degrees painted it the next way and then I just went to filter noise add noise and then that added some some gooky noise to that grunge that should come through all right but uh, basically yeah so I got grunge I got scratches that I painted in here and uh, see then uh, which I painted here with the idea that I could use these as a more uh, uh, yeah and now pardon me I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself in my head and now I'm stammering but uh, painted these in here and now you say uh, but I'm using a normal map uh, uh, to achieve uh, these bumps here in Maya on my I'll bring up my low poly teapot which yeah has a normal map applied to it uh, to get the various bumps on the surface and now you say the issue with a normal map is that I mean you can pardon me uh, I mean you can see that like a normal map isn't gonna function the same way that a bump map is because this a bump map uh, just works off of that sort of like grayscale value where this normal map it works off of R, G, and B and is a full color map and that's because uh, it's mapped uh, the X, Y, and Z values are mapped to each channel R, G, and B respectively and that's how it determines which direction to uh, shove your surface more or less uh, so uh, how do I translate what I've painted here in Photoshop into a more traditional normal style so what you would do is 
I can duplicate these grunge layers and I'll merge them. All right, and then once I have them merged, I can go to filter and then 3D and then generate normal map. And all right, and I don't know why this is happening. Uh, I actually just stopped my recording and then restarted it uh, because generate normal map is uh, not functioning correctly uh, for me uh, specifically on this file because basically I should be able to go to filter 3d generate normal map and if I even hit OK it'll do something to it but that's not correct I don't know what's going on in like see this is the one that I generated earlier it worked just fine earlier but basically what should be happening is I'll do a similar thing if I even just do a new file and just put this in there and I do like filter noise add noise and you know I can uh, add noise to it or whatever and then go to filter 3d generate normal map this is effectively what you should see I don't know why uh, what I have isn't working in the other file but then uh, you can adjust your detail scale here uh, if it looks like things aren't going the proper way you can invert the height so that it goes the direction that you want it to and you know you can see your preview here on the sphere and so on and so forth and then you can hit OK to generate your normal map and let's just pretend that I did that on the file or on the layer that I just created but instead I'm going to use uh, the layer uh, that I made from before uh, when this worked properly and so basically what I'm going to want to do is this uh, I'm going to save this as uh, my like grunge normals so I'm going to have my, my grunge normals file and uh, Got to dumpster the rest of what's in here and uh, what I'm going to want to do is in my blue channel uh, for this so actually what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go on, let me see all of this is I'm going to want to go into adjustments and and desaturate it which why image adjustments yeah and desaturate it and then I'm going to want to go into my blue channel here and uh, I'm gonna want to uh, layer or uh, edit fill uh, with a 50% gray into my blue channel and then I'm going to take this and bring this. Well, actually, I'll just uh, control A, control C, sample normal, shift control V, and I'm going to want to blend this using like soft light, uh, or you can use. Uh, uh, overlay or something like that as well 
and uh, and then I can also like adjust the opacity in here and you can use this uh, to uh, it also looks like perhaps I might even want to invert it uh, and you can use this to blend other details into uh, your normal map uh, that way you can have your extra painted details as well as uh, yeah and that way you can have your extra painted details in Maya incorporated into your normal map uh, that can be then plugged into Photoshop and again that would just go into the normal camera of your shader whether that be an AI standard surface or what have you you're going to, want to make in this case with the map that we baked out you're going to, want to make sure you have it set to use tangent space normals and uh, uh, and also with your normal map you're going to want to uh, turn your filter type to off and your color space to raw as it comes in um, and I think that's all I have to say about that yeah so it's just all about uh, um, so yeah it, it's it, using your different maps to uh, like target different parts of your model and uh, mask things out and add detail uh, that can uh, really easily add really detailed uh, detail and then also it can help you generate a normal map uh, which again will save you render time and uh, because a bump map gets evaluated three times at render time where a normal map uh, only gets evaluated once uh, to give you similarly high fidelity results uh, okay and I think that's all yeah so I hope that's helpful and uh, uh, thank you very much you have a nice night evening day week what have you bye bye